Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry it's been a very, very, very long time. I don't think I've uploaded since last summer. Um, I filmed videos, but for one reason or another, mainly the fact that I filmed them in slow-mo and when I tried to import them, it was taking like 27 hours. <laughs> that happened quite a few times. Uh, you guys have known me long enough to know that I I can be a bit of a dick sometimes. I filmed a video that I really liked the idea of and I just wanted to kind of get back into the swing of things between Christmas and New Year. But we all know that sitting and staring at my face for periods of time, like when it comes to editing, is not the best thing for my mental health. And I wasn't feeling 100% anyway, because we all know how much Christmas fucks me up. So that video didn't make it. But yeah, I have had quite a few messages over the last over the last few months really, um, a, asking if I was going to upload again and the answer is yes it's just as I've been saying since I have Edie time and energy and I have been focusing like all of my creative energy on music I think I said this in the video that I uploaded last about the songs that I'm writing especially now that I've got my MIDI keyboard I've got a MIDI keyboard for Christmas so I've been learning piano um because I've been able to play since I was like like eight or nine like I know where the notes are, I know some basic chords, but I want to learn to play. Um, so I've been doing that, which if you follow me on Instagram, you must be sick of my videos by now because I get just so excited when I can do something that I just upload it everywhere. If somebody put the idea into my head of doing something musically, I am toying with that. I don't want to talk too much about it yet because when I did my album, it was like one of the best and definitely one of the worst experiences of my life and I can't say that I don't regret it now so um in terms of doing something musically it's something that I need to think about very carefully um it would be different this time if I'm doing something by myself because I do want to do something by myself there's a few people that I want to work with that I've um spoken to and stuff which is which is cool but yeah it's for the most part it's something that I want to do by myself mainly because I don't have a choice. We are in a global pandemic and at the moment there, there is no one else I can work with. When I did my album, a lot of it was taken out of my control and it wasn't what I wanted. So doing it myself means that even if it's not as professional, even though I have an okay setup, at least it's mine and at least I can say it's something that I can be proud of. Hopefully, I'm hoping I can be proud of it. The last year has been an absolute shit show. Like just a shit show. I think everyone has had a turbulent time. I don't think anyone, apart from maybe like people that own shares in sanitizing companies, have had a decent time in the last, you know, year-ish. But you know what I've realized, and I spoke about this in the video that I did film, I have grown more mentally in this last year than I have in any other, it's not turned on darling, than I have in any other year. Like the things that I've been through in the last year have been things that I never thought I'd have to go through. I never thought I'd survive them. And I have, I had a bit of a revelation last, towards the end of last year. I'm not turning it up darling, cause it's loud. Um, about what I do and don't deserve basically. And it came after I had a session with my therapist and this was like October time maybe. And it had been growing like all year. But I came away from it and we hadn't even talked about respect. We talked about something completely separate. And like the next day, I just remember it was like, it was almost like he'd hypnotized me. And I was just like, fuck, I do deserve to be treated with respect. I was gonna say I've been demanding better, but that sounds like I'm being an absolute wanker. Um, but I've been expecting better, I guess. And not putting up with less than I deserve. I've been standing up for myself. Um, and when something could potentially be going wrong, I'm trying to repeat, or I'm not trying to, it's just in my head, like you deserve respect. So if this doesn't work out, then it's fine. You deserve respect. And that is massive for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still fucked in the head, but Jesus, that is, for me, that is massive. There's been a lot going on with Edie as well. Um, which have taken up a lot of my, not a lot of my time, but a lot of my brain space and my emotional time, I guess. You all know I'd spoken about the worries about her late walking, which resolved themselves. 
but they kind of revealed um, um, with those investigations going on some other things were revealed and because of covid um she hasn't had the tests that she needs uh, they want to do some neurological testing on her to make sure that everything's okay because there were some things that cropped up um and it has been like a year of waiting for that and trying to chase people up and it's just it's difficult she's also very 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 delayed with her speech um to the point where it's now like just i was gonna say it's now a joke but it's not a joke it's not funny it's causing me massive amounts of stress it's upsetting her she's she's gonna be three in april that's just crazy but she's got she's at the speech level of like a one year old um she can say single words and she babbles a lot but she should be putting sentences together by now and all of that and she can't even put two words together she won't even try everyone's agreed she needs speech therapy but the speech therapy that we've been given consists of two phone calls that i've had like two months apart where they just ask me questions. And it's like, well, this is, I know that everything that's going on in the world means that everything's gonna be delayed, but this isn't good enough. <laughs> um, because believe it or not, come September this year, I need to choose her school. She's going to school next year and she can't even say her own name. So I need to be thinking about that. And I know there are much bigger things going on in the world, but you know, for me, she is my world. And I wanna make sure that she has the best start in life you all know what shit time I had at school and that's playing on my mind. Like the way things are going at the moment, she wouldn't be able to enter a mainstream school. She'd either have to go into the learning support um, section of the school or to a specialist school. And to me, that just like sets you up for life, for a life of just uh, ostracization and isolation and loneliness and bullying and that's, I've, I've dealt with that for a large portion of my life and I don't want that for her. Um, so yeah, that is a big worry. Yeah, she goes to nursery now three mornings a week and she loves nursery. She's come on leaps and bounds um, since being there in September. She started in September, but she's still, you know, she's light years behind. Um, so trying not to worry about it too much, but I have to worry about it because I'm the one that has to fight for the right care for her. I'm still waiting on several referrals uh, in terms of like pain management. I need an operation on my back, which um, the referral got lost and I'm not chasing it up at the moment. It's not life-threatening with everything going on in the world. It's, it can wait and as I said, I've got, two, I've got other things to think about. I did finally stop breastfeeding Edie in, I think it was like, don't take your trout, don't take your nappy off Edie. Um, last September. So I have been able to, I started my Botox, my migraines again in December, uh, which have made a big difference. I can now take some stronger painkillers, but the problem is they make me super spacey and I don't feel good on them. And they tend to, trigger a migraine like I take them for my back and my hips but then they trigger a migraine so it's like swings around about if I literally cannot move cannot stand I need to take one uh, my feet have been really really bad they're always really bad in the winter um I started suffering from nerve loss again um so I had to restart the b12 I was always supposed to be having it but the doctors wouldn't give it to me um, because they didn't understand because it wasn't on part of my records because I've moved doctors like three times since all of that went on and it just wasn't on my record. So I had to find the original letter and take it in and then they agreed to, to start that again. So that's good. I mean, there's other stuff going on in my life. I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to jinx anything. This pandemic just seems kind of infinite now. I know that there's starting to be a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of a vaccination program. Like my mum has been vaccinated now because of her job. I think my dad is like next on the tier list. I don't know how things are working in other country, but we're kind of, we're doing it by like priorities. Um, and they've done like the like super old people and they're now moving down to the older people. Um, all the healthcare workers have been vaccinated now, I think everyone in the care home um, I'm going to be pretty low down on the priority list, even though because I have asthma, I sh I would be slightly up. But again, it's something that got lost in my medical records, the fact that I have asthma. I want to talk about 2021 quickly, although at the moment we've obviously got no fucking idea what could be happening. Um, I think the government, at least over here, obviously, I don't know. People are in other countries, it could be different. They're like 
teasing us by saying, oh, things will be back to normal by the summer, which uh, is bollocks because normal to me means absolutely no restrictions in place, uh, not having to wear face masks, no social distancing, everything open. That's not gonna be happening by the summer um, because they're saying that we're not all gonna be vaccinated until at least like till the end of the year. So bollocks. Um, the thing I'm waiting for is the gyms to reopen. I will be so excited when the gyms open again. For me, it is not only about the exercise, but it's about sometimes it's the only place I can, it's the only time that I will see or speak to another human being for like a week, um, apart from dropping Edie off at nursery. So it's like about the social interaction for me. But in the gym, since having Edie, where I go is like a safe place to be. Like as my relationship was failing with Edie's dad, I mean, it was failed long before I gave birth. Let's be honest. But as my relationship was breaking down and it was really unhealthy, really toxic and just destroying me, it was killing me. And that was a place where I could go where I didn't have to think about anything. I didn't have to think about Edie even because she was safe in the creche downstairs. So it was time just for me. And like people like smile and wave at me there. They don't have these preconceived ideas about who I am. Like people are nice to me. Like I shouldn't be surprised by that, but people are nice to me at the gym. Um, and that's something that, I, well, I think everyone needs people to be nice to them, but that is, you know, it's really important to me that people, that I'm treated with respect. So yeah, I'm excited about the gyms reopening. I really want to go on some adventures this year. Um, I want to go to places that I've never been before. I know that I really want to go to Brighton because it's somewhere that I've always wanted to go. And I want to go to somewhere deep in a forest. I saw a picture, um, I think it's, the Forest of Dean, and it's like being in another, in another world. And I really wanna go there. So I wanna go on adventures. I want my life to continue growing because, you know, it is growing and that's great. Um, I want to get super good at piano. Like I'm, I'm not good, but I'm able to play shit now. I want to carry on spending time with people that treat me well, that respect me. And that shouldn't need saying, but, um, you know, for me, as I said, it's it's a new thing. So I want to carry that on. I can't remember if I mentioned, I think I mentioned it in the video that I didn't upload, but I had like a date at the end of the summer. Uh, I was catfished by like this really old man. So like really old man, he was like 50. So older than me. Um, oh, and it's my birthday next week. I'm gonna be 36. I'm gonna be fucking old. It's mental. We all know how I deal with my birthdays. So hopefully this year is gonna be different. We were going on a date. We were going out for dinner, I think. it was. This was like the end of August, I think. Um, and there was something off about him. I spoke to him on the phone and I was like, maybe it's just because of the fact that he's like a different class to me. Cause I could tell that he was like, he came from money or he was rich. I think he told me he was like 40, but he wasn't 40. He was at least 50, 55. So we agreed to like meet halfway. Um, he lived in London. So I was sat in the car and I was like getting like nervous. And I saw him and I was like, fuck. And because of the way the car park was, I couldn't just leave. I mean, it did cross my mind because I was like, I'm not comfortable with this because he's not who he said he was. He was wearing a three piece suit. We went for dinner in like a pub and he was wearing a three piece suit. Like, you know, waistcoat with like the little cravat thing. So I got out of the car and I was like, hi. And he was like, hi, am I what you expected? And I couldn't exactly say no, who the fuck are you? But um, I think he was related to the person whose photos it was, either that or they were taken a very long time ago. And yeah, it was just, oh my God. And I, I was so, I felt so sick because I was so anxious at the fact that this person had catfished me. They weren't who they said they were, that I couldn't eat. I was like, shaking and it was just i just wanted to get out of there and at the end of the meal he was like he was insistent he was gonna buy me like a pudding and i was like i've not eaten my dinner i i, I, I just want to go and he was really really put his foot down he was like you're gonna take this home you're gonna eat it and i was like so he bought me a deep fried mars bar and ice cream <laughs> so if you don't know what that is deep fried just a basically a deep fried chocolate bar with ice cream possibly the worst thing in the world you could buy someone with an eating disorder. Yeah, I mean, it went in the bin. That was a bit fucked up. It was not, it was not, it was not great. 
but it triggered something in me which caused like loads of flashbacks to something that happened to me that I'd blocked out. I don't know if I blocked it out or if I was um, drugged. Uh, something that happened in my early 20s. It brought that back. And I started having like flashbacks and memories of what happened. And I was like, shit. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why what, what triggered it. I've spoken to my therapist about it. I, I don't know. For about like six weeks, that was really, that was tricky because um, I couldn't eat. I was just super anxious and I just felt shit. Possibly one of the worst dates I've been on. I mean, I say that like someone who's been on a crap ton of dates. I've had like probably like less i could count the dates i've had on less than one hand because all of the relationships i've had i fell into relationships my first boyfriend was my teacher oh god that sounds dodgy my guitar teacher i was a consenting adult um second boyfriend we like met up for coffee like had a date and then i won like a weekend away so we went away together um and he came to a gig as well that i did and then my last ex um like when we first met i couldn't walk i was living with my parents um and he didn't drive so he'd come over and he'd like stay over for a few days um we just fell together so dating is not really something that i've done massively it's anxiety inducing that is something that i will say it's insomnia inducing anxiety inducing kills your appetite but it's fun well it is with the right person anyway I am going to wrap this video up now because I've been talking for 25 minutes and I have shit to do because I am a grown up. Oh, 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 two more things. First of all, I started drinking coffee. Like, I'm fairly certain I must have ranted on at least one of my like way old videos about how shit coffee is. I like coffee now. I drink like two, sometimes three cups a day. Although I've told my mum that I just drink one because she was worried about it causing more migraines. But I drink coffee now. So is massive i'm not sure how healthy that is but i do enjoy it i told you that i drink alcohol now although i, I i'm shit at that i just can't can't stomach it because i don't like the taste of it um and last not last week but the week before i got a new nephew so i have how many nieces i've got four nieces there's lily the eldest you've met lily on my videos chloe you've also met chloe evie who i don't think you've met um, Lily is now 11, Chloe is 9, Evie is 6, Rosie is 5 months younger than Edie, and I have a baby nephew called Arthur. That was actually going to be Edie's name if she was a boy, because my granddad was called Arthur, so it's like a family name. But um, we're going over to see him like through the window this afternoon, because obviously we can't, we can't meet him properly. Um, it's going to be a good few months before we can meet him properly, which is really shit. Edie, do you want to say hello? Hiya. Hiya. She's busy. So, right, I'm going to leave it there. This is going to be an absolute beast to edit, but I'm determined to actually edit it. I'm going to get it up. By the time this goes up, I'm probably going to be 36. So wish me a happy birthday. Not that I can do anything or see anyone because, you know, lockdown. <coughs> my birthday's on the Thursday and I have plans on the Saturday, which I'm really hoping go ahead, but my anxiety is telling me they're not going to go ahead. So, fingers crossed for me. Anyway, I am going to go now. I'm going to import this video and hope it's not in slow-mo. Um, do some piano and then I'm taking Edie out. So yeah, I hope you all will have a good day. Happy New Year as well. Happy New Year. It's February, but Happy New Year. Don't hold me to it, but I promise I will try and upload sometime in February again, like another video in February. I will see you all in February. Thank you for watching and thank you for the messages that I've had from people. I've had comments on my videos, I've had messages on Instagram, I've had comments on Instagram from people saying, where are you? Are you okay? I'm okay. I wasn't okay a few weeks ago, but I'm okay now. Yeah, thank you very much. I love you all. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.